Hello, and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 167. Uh, we are your hosts. I'm Anton. And I'm Marwa. Hi, Anton. Hi, Marwa. And uh, folks may have noticed that um, that intro, I don't know if I did it wrong or what, but or maybe I did the outro. I think I did the outro. Yes, that's what it was. I paid the... Uh, so this is Apex Instant Tips, the low-budget entry into the In Some Cinematic Universe. Uh, and today... We are handling the show, just the two of us, Marwa. We don't have anybody helping us. So it's going to have glitches like that one right now. Um, maybe I'll play the intro as we leave. Who knows? <laughs> um, but uh, we did get a slide budget for today's show, um, although today's slide budget reuses last week. So um, we do have one slide. It's the same slide as last week. Uh, I'm going to put that on the screen. And uh, here we go. Um, so the the thing is, last week we talked about, um, and I think we're live. Um, yeah, I think so. I don't know if anybody's on. I don't know how yes. to tell. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, um, so last week we talked about the the whole process of um, the the um, a request that goes from your laptop all the way to the database and back, and we focused on this front end and how to see what's going on right here. Um, today, we want to talk about what's going on right here. What's mostly going on in the database? What's Orin's doing? What's happening right here? I think it's valuable for folks in the Apex community to have the understanding of, of the underpinnings of the Apex engine and, and what happens. Um, so, Marwa, I think the first thing to do is for us to talk about the distinction between what's a database session and what's an Apex session. I think people get... Um, uh, the, oh, when you, oh, ah, the here, uh, uh, you know what, I, mean, I had my cursor on the wrong screen. Last week we talked about the left-hand side. Today we're going to talk about the right-hand side. Um, uh, and so, so that's the here, Rich. Thanks for that. Uh, I am pointing with my mouse. <laughs> I was pointing on the screen that I'm looking at. Anyway, um, so thanks for that. Uh, totally low budget today. Uh, so yes, we're going to talk about what's going on on the far right hand side it, with ORDs in your Apex database. So I think the thing that is important for people to understand is this di distinction between a database session and an Apex session. So can you describe that for me, Mara? I'll go ahead and turn on the clock. We'll see if we can do this in five minutes. Yes, so the database session is a memory space in, in the database instance associated. You know what? I'm having a tough time hearing you. Can you? Try moving your mic just a little closer. Yes. So can you hear me better now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So the database session is a memory space in the database uh, instance associated with the database user and the connection. Right. And usually when we're talking Apex, that connection comes from ORDs. But when you're talking about a generic database session, it could, could come from anywhere. So it's, it's memory, basically, is a session. OK. Yes, exactly. And the uh, Apex session, it's basically data on a disk related to that session number. Right. So so an Apex session, is, like you said, is, is actually the data in the Apex tables stored on the disk. So Yes. And I would like to introduce a term, which is, I, I call it a live Apex session. And it's when a database session is connected, attached to an Apex session. Oh, and so what happens then? What's what's the when that attachment happens? Well, when that attachment happens, there is the a reset that's happening to the package state, and then we there is a checking of the cookie and the session that is if it is valid or not, and then data gets pulled up into the memory, right? Right. Yeah. So I guess so. Right. So what happens is ORDS. The first thing ORDS does when the when the connection comes through. Or the first thing it does is it resets all PL SQL package state. It reuses an existing pool, right? It's got a pool of 20 or so. It could be more database sessions that are already established. So it's able, it's and it's already connected. So it just reuses one of those connections. As you said, it re or it resets the PL SQL package state, hands off your, your the request to the Apex engine, and and the Apex engine then checks the cookie, makes sure it's valid. And then it can actually attach to a database and attach to an Apex session. And at that point, it reads that data off the disk into memory. And then you have, as you put it, this live Apex session. So your database session now has access in memory to all of your database 
uh, data, but it's all in memory at this point. Yes, and we can simulate that, right, Anton? Yeah, yeah, I think we, let's do that. We'll simulate it. What we have is we have an Apex session here, and it's got this particular session ID. Um, we know that it has a cookie. If we were to inspect this, we can take a quick look at the cookie. It's got this cookie right here. Um, and, and from there, I, I've also traced this. So I've, I've got this session in, in trace mode. If we click go right here, we can see that the last page view identifier ends in 414, but we can simulate all of what we just talked about right here. I'm gonna simulate this. This is what the, the ORDS engine does. It does a, a rest, reset package. So we'll reset our package state. Um, Apex, the engine, before it does the attach, it checks to make sure the cookie's valid, all of that. That we will assume that it did, and then we'll do an Apex session attach. So if I do that attach right here, and I go back here and I click go, now will I see this? I'm in trace mode. Right. You you are in trace mode and you just attach, just but attach. you won't you won't see uh, a new like debug messages until you detach. Until you detach, you won't see any new debug messages. Oh, that's right, because Apex debug is super smart about it bundles things up to be have the best performance it can, and it, it flushes those things out at the point that you you actually detach. So if I, for example, were to to write a message right here using Apex debug message um, right here, I'll just I'll just do this. I'll get to see that, but I don't see that until I detach. So I'll go ahead and detach. So definitely I should see this message in here, but I should see all of the other ones. So let's return here and click go. And there we have a new one. That's the one we just detached from. I'll take a look at that. And let's take a look in here. What was it that we said? So the first thing it does is it pulls stuff up into memory. So it did that right there. What else happens in all? This is a minimal thing. Yes, the minimal thing. I think then you can see um, a message from initialization code, which is a code that is run in the beginning when uh, the connection right, is Right, that's in our security attributes. If we look at edit the application definition, it's this initialization kill SQL code. This runs. Whatever you have here always runs. Even if you just attach, oh, it looks like we're already over, but you know what? Um, I think this has become a little bit more of a recommendation or even a, uh, a challenge than it has a firm rule. Um, so this right here always, always runs. If you just attach, this runs. After we attached, we did one thing. All we did was write this message. That's it, right? We did one single thing. And then you can see it starts to detach because then we did the detach. So. All, everything that happened above this initialization code always happens. It runs the initialization code, it ran our one message, and then it begins the detach, and we'll see that it also runs this cleanup code in the detach. So there it is. There's our cleanup message. That is the absolute bare minimum that a the Apex engine will always do. It will attach and it will detach. Right. So that's going to be about 50 rows of things that does. It's, I've got 42 rows. Right. right. So, and that 42 rows included bringing up some session state. It brought up P1 new, P99 remember, these this session state, right? Um, yes. Yeah. And you actually did the reset package manually in your code when you are simulating, but ORS is doing that for us. And so uh, at the end also, there it is, the reset globals. That's right. So ORDS or Apex also tries to clean up the global package state. Um, I'll tell you, it doesn't get everything. It's good that um, it's good that 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 ORDS does this because we haven't done this yet, right? But we do know that we, we if we come back here, we do know that we have this page view identifier. That page view took 47 seconds because we were talking, right? But I'm going to show you this funny little thing. We didn't reset this. If I do the exact same thing again, I attach and I detach. And then I come back here and I click go. You can see I got the same debug ID. Right? That's because you haven't reset the 
Backish state. We haven't, I haven't reset the package state. Of course, when you do this through the browser, this is all going to just happen. You're going to, you're going to have, it's going to take care of all this for you. But you can see that these are important things that ORDS is doing. There's a, there's things that ORDS is doing. There are things that Apex is doing. And we can kind of see what, what those are. Um, as I pointed out, it's 42 lines of debug messages. If we have the smallest possible, the smallest possible plugin right here, this is it. All this plugin is, is server side, run server side code with null. That's it. A dynamic action dynamic with action. a null code. Yes. yes. Yeah. That, thanks. Dynamic action with null code. If I click this, all it did, boom, null. Nothing else. Well, it didn't null. It, it wrote a, a debug message. So it's one line of code debug message. Let's take a look at that. So this one, 42 lines. Now we're going to go look at the one here. This is our, the one we just ran. This has 204 lines. That wow. much more is happening when you do a dynamic action. So all of this is really about understanding the underlying things that happen with Apex. But it does let us know that you, you, want, you want to bundle these things up, right, Marwa? Yes, you, group, group these into one connection, you mean. If yes, possible. exactly. If possible. So for example, ideally you don't run one dynamic action for every single row in this interactive report. If you have to do 14 or a thousand dynamic actions back to the database, that's going to be expensive. It's got to do all of those things we just looked at. Now it doesn't always write them out. We're in trace mode, but it does them, right? It does all of these things for every one of those. If you can bundle that up, you make one request, you do all the things you have to do, and you bring, all, you bring back what you need to. It's certainly better performance um, all across the board. So I don't know how much uh, this is a tip, uh, Marwa, but I do, think, I do think it's helpful to understand the, the fundamentals of what's going on underneath. And I can't even tell you exactly why, but I can tell you that knowing this stuff really informs me, my the way I develop Apex applications and how I troubleshoot them, those kinds of things. Um, yes, and this is important for developers to know, to understand so that they can know how to implement dynamic actions in a more effective way or other Apex. Yeah, throughout it. And I liked your description of, of a database session being memory an Apex session being stuff on disk, but then the live Apex session is sort of that mixture. It's it's Apex bringing that stuff up into memory is that live Apex session. Exactly. And that lasts usually a really short amount of time, right? Exactly, yes. Um, and the shorter, the better, right? So. Yes. All right, well, that is way more than a five minute tip today. So we won't keep people uh, for other things. I promise next time I will have a wisdom of the week or something funny to say. Um, but uh, until then, uh, do all the things. Uh, if you liked the show, like the show, uh, send a letter to your friends, tell your mom about it. Um, Marwa, your mom's watching, right? Yes. All right, you can say hi to her if you want. All right. We'll talk to everyone later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Now, wait, wait, don't, don't hang it. Nobody leave yet because now you can watch me figure out how to play the outro. Here we go. Uh, there it is. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs>